Okay, uh, if I could get everyone's attention, please. Uh, before our regular session, we do have a public hearing scheduled, and we do have a number of speakers lined up, so uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, at this point, I'd like to call the public hearing to order. I'd ask that everyone please turn off all cell phones and electronic devices. And now, would everyone please stand for a moment of silence and the pledge to the flag. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, would the clerk uh, please read the public hearing notice? Notice of public hearing for the annual modifications to Orange County Agricultural District numbers one and two in accordance with New York State Agriculture and Markets Law, section 303-A. Notice is hereby given that the Orange County Legislature and members of the Department of Planning of the County of Orange, New York, will meet at the Legislative Chambers of the Orange County Government Center, located at 255 Main Street, Ocean, New York, on Thursday, the 6th of June, 2019, beginning at 3.15, for the purpose of holding a public hearing and to solicit comments and concerns from the public with respect to the proposed modifications to Agricultural District Numbers 1 and 2. Orange County Agricultural District Number 1 is located to the northeast of New York State Route 17 and encompasses all or parts of the towns of Blooming Grove, Chester, Cornwall, Crawford, Goshen, Hamptonburg, Monroe, Montgomery, Newburgh, New Windsor, Palm Tree, Walk Hill, and Woodbury. Agricultural District Number 2 is located southwest of New York State Route 17 and encompasses all or part of the towns of Chester, Deer Park, Greenville, Goshen, Minnesink, Monroe, Mount Hope, Walk Hill, Warwick, and Wayweanda. Further notice is given hereby that copies of land order applications and the written recommendations of the Orange County Agriculture and Farm and Protection Board, environmental assessments, and other related documents are on file with and may be examined in the office of the clerk of the county legislature at 255 Main Street, Goshen, New York, the Orange County Planning Department at 124 Main Street, Goshen, New York, and on the Orange County website at www.orangecountygov.com slash leg. The following landowners are requesting inclusion of land in agricultural district number one and two, Francis J. and Kathleen L. Spinelli, Town of Newburgh, section block and lot 20-4-3.2, 23.5 acres, Eric and Keisha Richardson Barnett, Town of Chester, section block and lot 5-1-1.4, 18.2 acres. This notice was published in May 22nd issues of the Hudson Valley Press, the Times Community Newspapers, Walk Hill Valley and Mid-Hudson Times, and the Walk Hill Valley Dispatch. The May 24th issues of the Orange County Post, Strauss Newspapers, the Warwick Advertiser, Monroe Photo News, the Chronicle, and the News of the Highlands, Como Local, and the Gazette. Okay, thank you. At this time, I'd like to call up uh, Kelly Moore, Senior Planner for the Orange County Planning Department, to summarize the Agricultural District's inclusion of lands. Good afternoon, and thank you for having me. Um, I just wanted to give a synopsis of the process just for everyone here and what the conclusion of the Orange County Ag and Farmland Protection Board was. So I'm trying not to repeat too much of what was just said, so I did make some last minute notes here. But consistent with procedures established by the New York State Commissioner of Agriculture and the Orange County Legislature, annually in March, Orange County can accept applications from landowners for property to be added to either of the two ag districts. When received, applications are reviewed for, complete for completeness and eligibility by the County Planning Department in cooperation with the County Real Property Director. Uh, complete applications along with site and soil maps and an environmental assessment form prepared by the planning department are then shared for review and recommendation with the county agricultural and farmland protection board. Information about, about all applications is also shared for comment with the relevant chief elected official in the host municipality. In March of this year, the planning department received the two applications that were just mentioned, one in the town of Chester and one in the town of Newburgh. I will note in order to correct the record that the town of Chester application from the Richardson Barnett, uh, that is actually 
the Agricultural District 2, not number one, as indicated on the application that was distributed to the legislature and to the Ag and Farmland Protection Board. Uh, so then the, the board met with the applicants, conducted site visits, use remote mapping technology and discuss the two applications at the April 17th meeting of the County Agriculture and Farmland Protection Board. This is a public meeting. The board's decision was also guided by New York State Agricultural and Farmland, Agriculture and Markets Law that focuses on agriculturally important soils and the viability for the land to be used for agricultural production. Both applications were unanimously recommended by the board for inclusion. And one last note is that uh, what the county designation would do is provide right to farm protections only if a New York State defined farm operation were to be legally advanced and functioning and they were following sound agricultural practices as defined by New York State rules. So that's all for me. Good. Okay, thank you. Uh, at this point, I'm going to open up the uh, hearing and ask that anyone wishing to speak, please sign up with the deputy clerk. And when your name is called, please go, come up to the microphone and give your name and your town for the record. There will be a strict three-minute limit for all speakers. And uh, before we get started, I know um, uh, one of these uh, parcels uh, in particular uh, has a lot of uh, public concern. I do want to state that um, Ag District has uh, absolutely nothing to do with local zoning laws. So whether or not we do or do not include these lands in the Ag District, any uh, projects that these landowners uh, want to move forward with are subject to local zoning and uh, permitting requirements. Uh, so with that, we're going to get started. Our uh, first speaker, Ricky Hall. Good afternoon. Um, Ricky Hall from Town of Newburgh. Um, this has concerns about the Spinelli project over on Holmes Road. Um, I'm not so concerned about the farm part. I'm really concerned about what he wants to do as far as putting a nursery in. Um, growing Christmas trees is fine, growing apple trees is fine, but to put a commercial nursery like a Devitz or a, a Liptondale type nursery in this area, it just doesn't fit. Um, we've had different people come in and take a look at it and they also agree that just this type of use of farm, quote farm, doesn't really fit this type of road. It's very, very residential. Okay, are you finished? That's, that's about it. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Okay, our next speaker, Wendy Jensen Hall. Good day, and I'd like to say thank you to all the veterans. I applaud you. I, I'm, I'm, I love that. I'm happy to see you. Um, my name is Wendy Jensen Hall. I do live on Holmes Road in the town of Newburgh. Um, I do have a child, and I am very concerned because all of us on Holmes Road do have wells. Um, the Spinellis do understand that there's an artesian well there that we all share, and any insects end up into our wells. Um, I understand and have researched that these pesticides and insecticides from Christmas tree farms that are routinely um, accepted can cause problems for children, the infirmed, and anyone else that has any kind of debilitating disease. I don't want that. I don't want that in my property. I don't want to have to deal with that. Um, I also am very concerned about the traffic in our road. We do not have any kind of pull-off, any kind of way to, if you decide you're at the wrong place, if you're going the wrong way, to stop. We have an extreme hill, and every winter we have people ending up in our driveways because of these hills. There's no way that this will not cause accidents on our road. These will have devastating consequences on our animals and our wildlife because they plan on putting up an eight foot high deer fence around the entire property. What, who's gonna pay for all the car accidents when people can't
can't see, and there's a deer running out in front of them. Because at a Christmas tree farm, you're going at 5 o'clock at night, 4 o'clock at night, there's deer that are running out. There's always going to be accidents. There's no way to stop it. There's no way to combat that because the deer won't have any place to go. What about all of the um, children that live on our street with all the extra um, traffic that's going to absolutely be there? Trucks, all, all of the air pollution, the noise pollution, it will devastate where we live currently. I like going out on my back deck after a hard day of work, as I'm sure a lot of you do, and being able to sit out there and listen to the birds and watch the wildlife. That will be gone. I will be listening to machines running. Because if they are deemed an agricultural, they can run their machines from 7 o'clock in the morning to midnight if they want. I don't want to listen to that. Do any of you? Would any of you want to listen to that when you came home from a hard day of work? Because I don't. And I know my neighbors don't. We are very, very upset about the fact that this will be a nursery, not a Christmas tree farm, as they're trying to pretend it's going to be just an innocent Christmas tree farm. It's going to be a nursery where they're going to be bringing in things, trees, mulch, sod, soil. Where are they going to dispose of all of this? Where are they going to dispose of all their, uh, their leftover trees that don't sell, plants, anything? Where is it going to go? Who's going to take care of it? We're going to be smelling it while it's decomposing next to our property. Thank you. Please consider it. Okay, thank you. Uh, next speaker, Francis J. Spinelli. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Francis J. Spinelli. I live in the town of Phillipstown, and I own Airfield Farms, which is on Holmes Road. Um, I'm here today as the applicant for our property uh, to be part of Agricultural District Number 1, similar to my neighbors on both sides of me. Um, we, are, we currently have 800 trees planted, and we plan on having a small nursery and a, a cut-your-own tree farm in the amount of time that it takes for these trees to grow. Uh, we'll also probably have pre-cut trees beginning this fall, sold out of a small farm stand. Um, this fall, we also plan on building our residence uh, on this piece of property. Um, we're asking to be included uh, in Ag District Number One. We've gone through the process. Um, it's very unfortunate that my neighbor, uh, one of my neighbors in particular, has created a hostile environment for myself and my family um, through direct mailings and social media. I hope someday that my other neighbors realize that uh, the half truths they were being told are still being told, don't come to fruition. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, next speaker, Lori Costanza. Hi, my name is Lori Costanzo. I live at 78 Holmes Road. Excuse me for being emotional. This is a pretty tough day. I'd like my husband to speak on my behalf because he can articulate how we feel much better than I can at this moment. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, thank you. Uh, next speaker, Joseph Stanzo. Good afternoon, Joe Costanzo, Newburgh, New York. I have some items that I'd like to submit to legislation. Um, one is a four-page document that was downloaded from county, um, which basically states the use of a nursery, permitted uses. Do you all have this? Because if you don't, I'd like to submit it. Great. I also have a written submission from an individual Jim Burns, that wasn't able to be here. Do you have a copy of that written submission? Or comment, public uh, you, comment? You can leave any materials with the clerk after the meeting and she'll make sure we get them all. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to start by stating I am not opposed to the farm. What I'm opposed to is the blatant disregard for privacy 
and respect for where I live. I've been singled out, targeted, provoked by many actions, and it's been premeditated. I didn't act on it. This operation, you have no idea when or what will take place next because the applicant says he's not subject to any site plan approval. Come home at 8.30 at night, there's a machine running in my backyard. If this soil is so valuable, why was it allowed to go back to residential 10 years ago? If it's so valuable and the farmer is so much wants to be a farmer, why doesn't he inflict deed restrictions on his own property that says it won't go back to residential because he cares for it so much? If he cares for it so much and he wants to fit into the neighborhood and he feels like he's being targeted, 23 and a half acres, you gotta show up on my back door, two feet off of my pool, with an excavator? All right? I know for a fact, I have the minutes from the Ag Committee, no one ever visited this property. It's in the minutes. You think long and hard about what you're doing, okay? And don't dump this in the town's lap because they were responsible and this has been an inherent problem for over 12 years. And I told the supervisor this would manifest into something. And I told him that this would mushroom into something more serious, and here we are, 10, hour, 10 years later. Okay? So if you want to hammer it down and say, oh, yeah, this is farmland. Will we really need Christmas trees? Really? Really? My three minutes are up. I took my wife's other thing. No, we don't have real time from others. Don't do that? Each speaker yeah. gets three minutes. I'd like to see some vegetables go into some schools where we need, where we need produce. Thank you. Next speaker, Dean Tamburi. Good afternoon, uh, Dean Tamboy, uh, town of Newburgh. Uh, again, I live on Holmes Road. Uh, we first heard about the tree farm, we actually said that's pretty good instead of having houses, et cetera. Uh, my concern with it is the, the, um, the nursery end of it. You know, what could be, when you see what a nursery does, is very broad. Um, if he's doing what he had said, maybe nursery could be down to a one, two, three, as opposed to being so broad. You know, I'm not saying, but you know, down the road, if he sells it, he could, the next uh, person could do anything they want with the property. All right, so that concerns me. It concerns me that we have a nice little neighborhood. We're all in an uproar. Um, I, understand, I understand Joe's position regarding the um, offense by his pool. I would just wish they would get together, give him a buffer that he would need, that we can get along in the neighborhood. Um, give him a buffer so he doesn't have to see that, keep the machines down to a certain period of time. But again, the nursery and the, the farm, we said we agreed with the farm, but the nursery allows them to do, gives them a lot of uh, uh, leeway. So um, there was a letter from the town right. that uh, Gil had wrote that he had spoke to him, and he spoke to him today, and I even though they, they encourage farming, but the town uh, understands that there's some neighbors of the property would have some concerns. Uh, during a conversation uh, with Mr. Uh, Spinelli, he reported it is not the case and the project will not balloon to a large nursery operation. Ms. Mr. Spinelli, Spinelli also, is, uh, above the restaurant pro project, will be a small operation, only functional three months out of the year. Um, again, that's fine, but the broad thing says that doesn't mean he'll do it, maybe somebody else will do it down the road. All right, we already have issues, and again, I'm usually on the other side, I want building, I, I want to build, I want progress. I mean, however, we have farms around us or that are picking, et cetera, I'm sure everybody sees it. We don't have, again, we don't have signs, people turn around in your yard from New York City or whatever, so if we, if we whatever we do do, we should do that and, and make sure that we have proper signage for everyone as well. The, uh, it's a town issue, I understand, but the road is very dangerous. There's blind spots, there's tight corners on it. 
uh, that concerns me as well with some landscapers coming in and out. So I hope you guys take a good hard look at it. You should definitely go visit the site um, and, and see what you're um, voting on or whatever. And I uh, appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, next speaker, Brian Morris. Good afternoon. I live at 53 Holmes Road. Lived there since uh, 2003. Um, I like the idea of having a farm in my backyard. I have an operating farm behind me. Lawrence Farms down the street. Um, my house is built in, you know, was a farm. Um, I appreciate the the farm. We need farms to sustain Christmas trees. There's a shortage out there. Um, just look it up. But uh, I think it's better than 16 houses going in. I'd rather see the farm. So I'm in support of it, and I live on the road. Thank you. OK, thank you. Uh, if there are no uh, further speakers, I'm going to declare the public hearing closed. Uh, just a matter of procedure, we are not voting on this today. We'll be voting on it uh, next month. And in the meantime, anyone is still welcome to submit written comments. Thank you.